I want to be the underdog. When it's really very difficult to be that guy, to be a guy, to be Mike Tyson and saying who's gonna, how you gonna be on top of the heat because I haven't fought in 18 months and, and it's great, I'm on the top of the heat. When Danny Williams and you met for the media press conference, unlike lots of past rhetoric, you know, nasty stuff, you hugged him. I don't think I ever saw that in a fighter with a fighter that you fought any time recently anyway. Is there a new humility to you? Is there a new approach to you that wants to just bring it in the ring and forget all the other nonsense? Well, yes. I, you know, I have children now that are old enough and at the age where they, um, they look at the Internet and they watch um, News Center, and I don't want them to see me being very um, disrespectful to another human being. And I'm pretty conscious of this now, and I, I'm just trying to make everything. I, I'm just juggling so many hats at this particular moment. You know, I have to make sure um, my, my children at this period of their lives have a positive view of me. But um, I still have that fire in my belt. This is a humble time in your life. You, you, you're getting ready to sell your cars if you haven't already. You know, everyone knows that you're in the hole financially. So this humility thing... This is not an act. This is a man at 38 to say, hey, I don't want to blow my last shot if this is my last shot. Well, you know, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to sell any fight tickets being a nice guy if that's what people might say. But then again, people are entitled to their opinion. I'm just going to live my life. And I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I've been blessed to be able to make a large sums of money. And everybody probably said, well, he's going to fight. He's going to fight three or four times, and he's going to make all this money back, and people are going to give him more contracts. I don't know what I really want to do. I just know I want to have a stable life. Mm -hmm. I want to stop um, allowing myself to be addicted to chaos. Yeah, you've said that many times. Now, yeah. now, let's talk about that, that phrase, addicted to chaos. You really liked or you were addicted to the nonsense, the craziness? Well, I don't know if I, I particularly liked it. Uh, I was a, such a glutton for pain, but I just, it, it always, um, by some bizarre means, seemed to follow me. And I, and I just never wanted to... Um, be a part of that anymore. I'm at a stage in my life I just want to, um, I don't know if it's be happy, I just want to be pretty stable in my life. So you have to understand, um, this um, this particular um, go around, I've lost absolutely everything. I, I'm, forget finance, I've been down and up financially my, through my whole life, basically, but just people who are dear to me, my friends, my girlfriend, I just chased everybody away from me. And um, it's my own, it was all my own insecurity. Because I, oh, it's just, oh, man, you have to know that there's some great people out there, and um, I just blew them away. And I have to start all over and probably find some more other great people. It's going to probably be difficult, but they're out there. Maybe this is a little dramatic, but I wonder if you felt at any point that low where you said, geez, I had everything. Why? Why did I do it this? Why did I do it this way? I don't know, Roy. I never, um, I've never reached that level yet. That's good. I never blamed anybody why. I never, I never, I just never blamed anyone but myself. You know what I mean? And once I, I come to that conclusion that it's my fault, I've never, um, I never um, took another step backwards. I understand that I created the demons. I wrote the book that I'm this particular kind of guy or this monster. I wrote all those stories. So um, everything that fell upon me was brought upon by me. What are we like when... You know, Gina grows up and she's 17, 18 years old and there's a knock on the door. Uh, Mr. Tyson, uh, I'd like to go out with your daughter. What's it going to be like for Mike Tyson to answer the door and they want to go out with your daughter? Um, I'm going to be like any other father. At one time, it's just, it's okay for me to date anybody's sister or daughter and, and do whatever and go to, go to bed with a, um, a free conscience. But the thought of somebody dating my daughter or her dating anybody that... Um, Resembled me in any kind of fashion, I would just <laughs> die of a heart attack. No shotguns, though, or anything? Um, like. Probably, the possibility, <laughs> but just a stern talk and look. You've had a lot of different things in your career, and you've had a lot of bad moments. There's no question about it. But is there a place for you in your heart? I know this sounds ridiculous, where you can almost laugh at some of the things and, oh, and, I, and laugh it off as best you can. Oh, I laugh them off now because um, it's the past, and I. I don't allow myself to become a prisoner of my past. What's it like to be the baddest man on the planet, in the world, I've, and everywhere you go? I've learned to deal with it now, at this stage in my life, but before I was just very uncomfortable with it. What do you it. think you've learned to deal with? What do you think, that's um, how you've handled it? I've learned to just deal with the fact that if I'm sitting down um, at a bar and I'm with a young lady or with a guest, and, and 50 people ask me for an autograph and they, they start a big autograph session there, I've learned to just say yes and sign it and you sign it. 
but deep inside I'm just saying, wow, you irritable, you're just irresponsible person. Don't you see I'm trying to have a dinner with this person, but I, I wouldn't dare say that anymore. At one time I would say that, but I just sign. I just sign. I don't see them anymore. That's the new thing. I don't see the faces anymore. I just sign, so I don't get offended. I, I used to get offended because I would see the faces, and I would see a lack of respect in the faces because they didn't care. I just want that autograph. What do you think about you? That's the guess. That's the question know. I'm asking. I, I think um, I'm just Mike. I don't. I don't go from any other perspective. That I feel that I'm. I'm an athlete, and I'm. I'm a hell of an athlete when I want to be, and I. And I believe when I'm on top of my game, I'm invincible. Still. Yes. You feel that still. When I'm on top of my game, it's, you know, and I, I try to say that without being. Um, Vain, but yeah, that's what I truly believe. So when are you going to get it back? What do you want to get? What do you want to come back in your life? Affection, respect, no, the I title, just, what? I just, um, the title will come back. All that stuff will come back. All that thing I have to do about that is just work hard and dedicate myself and just stay persistent and consistent on what I've did for so many years. But I just, um, I just want to say to all of my friends who are truly my friends who I just, um, was just very just disrespectful to and I just really, um, I just wanted them to know I'm truly sorry. You know what I mean, they were the only people that would want to be with me, regardless of my my the poor, my the deplorable state. And um, I just um, it's really just obliviated that friendship. Yes, and you have a famous quote, Edmund Dantes, from the Count of Monte Cristo, Alexander Dumas. Is the quote that you like to recite is. Don't rob me of my hate. It's all I have left. Well, I'm not like that anymore. See that? But I'm saying at I'm one not point, that yeah, I'm not that hate was what drove you. No, I'm just no. It wasn't. It wasn't hate. It was just a misguided. Um, I was just think a misguided opinion of of people in the world that I surrounded myself. But in. you didn't have any trust in yourself. That's what it's all and about. And that's exactly that's what I have to. You have to trust yourself in order to trust anyone. And I didn't trust myself. You mm -hmm. know, I, I couldn't trust myself to be with. My girlfriend thinking that well, I might think about <laughs> sleeping with a friend or something. I had to trust myself, and um, I've, I've reached the level where I'm capable of trusting myself now. And I just, I'm just so happy in that um, degree of life, and that from that stage, I'm just, I'm just proud of myself that um, I trust myself as a human being.